I just want to try this. Hey y'all, welcome to Cyrus Homestead. I'm Zach. I'm Jen. And we're in the beautiful greenhouse. We are. Just for a quick second. Yeah. So uh, this is a cabbage fermenting video, we promise. But we also wanted to show our plant starts that we got going for our spring garden. So we mentioned that they were getting a little leggy. Yeah. So what do you do when they're getting a little leggy and you have a greenhouse sitting outside? <laughs> You bring them outside in your greenhouse on a sunny day to fix the legginess. Yeah, it was cold, very cold today, but the greenhouse stays really, really nice, yep. especially when the sun's out. So yeah. I think they enjoyed their day out here. They sure did. So we're going to bring them back inside now that the night's out and we'll bring them back out again tomorrow. Just in case it were to frost in here. Exactly. Very right. well good. Yeah, it probably is. We've been dropping really low, but when the sun's shining, we're a solid 80 degrees in here. Um, when the sun sets, we're a solid 30. So it's time to bring the babies inside. So let's go, y'all. Let's go. Provide lantern. Yeah. Look at this. <laughs> Ooh, so pretty. And these are little solar things. Yeah. Somebody sent these to us. They're so awesome and they're beautiful they're awesome. in a greenhouse. All right. Here let's we go. go. Look at the See? beautiful light. Bye bye, beautiful greenhouse. Bye bye, beautiful greenhouse. So here are the rest of our starts and they're doing very well. We do really much like these lights. They cover a bigger span and everybody gets the light so nobody has to stretch for it. So that's one thing that people not necessarily misunderstand about legginess, but it's something that people think it's leggy for a different reason than it actually is. So what I mean by that is when you think of leggy plants, you immediately think, well, you got your light too high up and they're having to stretch for the light not always the factor if your light doesn't broad span across your entire plat of seed starts that plant on the outside is going to reach over for that light so we've mentioned that uh the shop light works just fine however this hall's tools uh setup is very wide and so it really requires two shop lights side by side uh to cover the whole thing and that's what caused some of ours to get a little bit leggy. Don't be concerned if you're coming through the same thing and your plants are getting a little leggy. It's okay. We can save them. What we're going to do is uh, we basically, we're lucky enough to have a greenhouse. It's very helpful for us, but in the middle of winter, sometimes it's hard to do that. Um, but we're going to take those out every day as long as it's sunny and make them better out in the greenhouse. And then we'll eventually transplant them, take them down a little, kill the legginess. <laughs> If you don't have a greenhouse, what can you do, right? You're like, well, I don't have a greenhouse, I can't do that. Get you a clear tote. Jess over at Roots and Refuge did a beautiful salad mix video about it with having a bag of soil, putting a clear tote on top of it, and she made a mini greenhouse. Well, that has multiple uses. Buy you one, it fits almost perfect over one of these flats, flat trays. So you can do that during the day, and then you yourself have a greenhouse. Just go set it out there and then it all gets surrounding light and things aren't stretching for the, the uh, sunlight. So you can do that and that'll help solve that bending over trying to find the light. And just watch your temperatures. Yes. You know, if you're freezing and below, really hard freezing, just make sure you bring them in and right. don't leave them out there to die because right. they will if it's too cold. That's very true. And this also helps harden them off. So what I would do is I would get that plastic tote. I would set it outside at least an hour yeah. in the sunlight. Let it warm up in there. Let it warm up so your plants don't have a big shock going out there. Yeah. But then you can place them on there, let them stay out there all, all during the day. Ours, we waited a little long, but it's fine. We didn't drop too quick today. Yeah. But as soon as the sun starts setting, bring them back inside. And so if you just have a couple flats, it's not a big deal, right? You can do that. Maybe a couple toes for about 10 bucks each and you're good to go. Yep. All right, y'all, that's your little gardening tip for the day. Let's do this cabbage. Now onto the cabbage. <laughs> Now it's time to make the cabbage. It's time. So a lot of you might already know how to do this and some of you might not, but a lot of people have asked, so we're going to do it. Yep. And this is, I mean, it's what I was going to do anyway today. So we're coming <laughs> along with it. <laughs> Let's get at it. Okay. So sauerkraut is really, really good for you. Um, it's a ferment and you can let it sit for however long you want to. Some people do it for a few weeks. Some people do it for a few months. Um, but if you're not familiar with fermentation, then maybe 
pause the video and go learn a little about that and figure out that process. But I mean, I have a few videos on it, not many, but it's a really fun and cool thing to do. It's super simple. You just get some cabbage and um, ideally homegrown, obviously, but if not, store-bought is fine too. And we're gonna get started. And hopefully you all try this along with me. Um, some of you probably remember your grandparents doing this or your great-grandparents doing it. And you may have forgotten it. And now this can be a little refresher and something that you can do too. So we're gonna get started. So we're gonna, first we're gonna take off the first few big leaves and we're gonna set them aside because they're gonna act as a protective covering for our ferments. And next, we're gonna start chopping. So you're just gonna chop it up like you normally would if you were gonna boil cabbage or something, and it'll turn itself into shreds when we get to the next step. I just wanna try this. <laughs> that was cool. I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> okay, so we've been we've had this chopped up for quite some time now. But she lost her stomper. No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. He did something with it the other day. So, he took it off somewhere and now it's nowhere to be found. Our really good friend Nathan at Samson Farm made us a honey dipper, a stomper, and then also I forget exactly what it's called, but it's one that you put down the soil, a dibbler? Yeah. For uh, measurements of soil depth. And so the stomper, we were like, yes, we can we finally had it use two it. Days ago. And now and it's gone. Because he took it. Somewhere. I didn't. She did it. So it looks like the one time we can use this stopper, we're not going to be able to because we can't find it. And I guarantee you we find it right when we get done. Yep, yep. So we're going to improvise on the stomping. <laughs> okay, so while you've got your cabbage in your bowl, you're going to take some salt. You can do peak Himalayan or something, just the regular iodized salt. It's not really going to work. So take some peak Himalayan and about a teaspoon. Just sprinkle it over, <laughs> sprinkle it over the cabbage. And that's going to also help that liquid separate. And that was just one cabbage. So it might fill up two quarts, maybe just one. We'll see. Um, but now we're going to pound it for a good while because we want all of the liquid to come out of the cabbage and separate and be in the bottom of the bowl. So if you have a stomper like you know, your grandparents would have used with their crock or something. That is absolutely perfect. Uh, I've got a few wooden spoons. They're pretty hefty and this thing because Zach lost my stumper. So I didn't. We're gonna... Still looking for it. <laughs> so we're going to try those and see how they work. But stop it for at least 10 minutes and then see how much um, liquid has separated. Who loses that? You. Not me. <laughs> Stopper would have been nice, huh? It would have. <laughs> okay, so we've got our salt on and we beat beat it. it. Beat, beat it. We beat, beat it. it. Just beat it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just it beat didn't it. produce much juice. So in that situation, what you can do is cover it and walk away and let it sit and create its own juice. So that's what we're gonna do. And the salt will pull all that. Yeah, out. it was very, very store-bought. Store-bought. <laughs> <laughs> and didn't have much juice. So. Right. Yeah, we're going to cover it and walk away and let it do its own juice. Just keep on checking on it periodically and see how much juice you've got. Hour or two. Yeah. So here we go. Here you go. Okay. So honestly, it's this has been sitting for quite some time. Um, I got busy and things just happened and we had a lot to do today. <laughs> so, yeah, Ray Ray. Hey. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's sitting in some pretty good juice, I feel like at this point, and we're going to start packing it into our jars. So outside. yeah, daddy's outside doing the fence and I think he's on the phone. Yeah. 
So we're gonna start packing it into our jars. You wanna pack it really, really, really tightly, as tightly as you can, and use that pounder and pound it down as you go. I'm gonna do about a handful at a time and just keep pounding it down, and that'll get even more juice out, and you want it just to be super, super duper tight. You don't want any room for any kind of anything to grow. You just want it to ferment, so let's go. Yay! Yay! Okay, so you can see that. Um, that worked out perfectly. It is beautifully covered with all the juice and it's perfect. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take those leaves that we took off of our head of cabbage and we're gonna put one in here and just cover up everything and make sure everything is under that liquid and secure it real nice and tight under that leaf. Fermenting done, huh? Yep, that was easy. Um, hopefully it looked easy to you all. For us making the video, it was kind of hectic here and there and everywhere and all day adventure. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a very, very easy process. It's an easy thing to do. Um, like I said, if you're not familiar with fermenting, you'll want to do that. This is not really a how-to ferment video, um, but it, it's fun and it's easy. And you know, it's the way that our grandparents and great-grandparents used to do it. And um, this is one of those things that you know, you talk about learning to homestead before you can homestead, and this is a perfect thing for that. Fermenting itself is learning to ferment and um, preserve your own foods and stuff like that is a perfect thing to do while you wait. Yeah. And then, you know, you still, at the, you know, at this point we have a homestead. I did this before we did, but I still love to do it because sauerkraut fermented is so, so good for you. It's fantastic. Fantastic for you um, and read up on the benefits. It's just, and it tastes fantastic. So yeah. we're going to leave this on our counter away from our other ferments. Um, I'm going to need like more space at this point. We have a lot of things going on. She's got like a hundred foot <laughs> pantry in there. But they can't be foot. next to each other. They I know they can't. My part. goodness. The whole house is going to turn into different pantries. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> Who needs um, closets? <laughs> but put it on your shelf and let it sit. The preference, it's a preference on how long you want it to sit. Right. You can go anywhere from three days. If you like it at that point, you can start eating it to, I know my grandmother and grandparents used to have it on their shelf for up to six months so that's completely up to you try it it's just gonna get like stronger it. tasting right yeah. it's gonna be stronger fermented yeah. so when it comes to the taste that you want you stick it in the fridge right? yeah also note um, you can do this with red cabbage too or purple cabbage it's a whole lot prettier but yeah we had green so and uh, like you can throw different stuff in there too right like beets and yeah. different things that you Carrots, can ferment with like it yeah. yeah cool well that, it is it for the sauerkraut. I'm super excited. I love some sauerkraut. It always makes me happy when she does that. I wish we could dive into it now because actually I was gone doing tomorrow's video while we were shooting this one. So I hope you all uh, stick around for tomorrow. We got some cool stuff. We'll get outside and do a couple projects. But yep. there it is. There it is. Hope y'all enjoyed it. <laughs> we love y'all. We love y'all. Until the next one. Bye. Bye.